Howdy folks, welcome back to Not Come Out Arc. We are back in our 50 state series today. Lake 11, Georgia. And I do have a very specific flight in mind. We're going to fly over the Okefenokee Swamp, which is the first swamp that I've ever flown over in X-Plane 11. So I want to see what it looks like, what the train looks like. If you remember from our longer flights, like when we flew from Denver to Minneapolis, you can see the train change. So... I want to know what the swamp train looked like, so we're going to fly with the swamp. I do have real weather turned on, so we do have clouds. The base is like 3,500 feet. We're going to stay nice and low today. The wind, I think it's three whole knots from 30 degrees, so this is runway 33 at the airport, which is Fargo, Georgia. I chose Fargo because there's a Fargo in North Dakota, which everybody thinks is in Minnesota. And um, that Fargo is in North Dakota, not Minnesota. This Fargo is in Georgia, so I thought it'd be a humorous place to start. And we're just going to fly um, pretty much just due east over the swamp. And we're going to land at Davis Field, 3 Juliet 6. This, by the way, this Fargo airport, it's a private airport in real life. In the simulator, it's Golf Alpha 25. Anyway, so it looks like we might be at like an air park or something. Air park being where houses, instead of backing up to a golf course, they back up to a grass strip. So you can fly your plane. So instead of going to an airport, you live on an airport, more or less. Um, that's an air park. At least that's how I see them in Minnesota. I assume based on the train gen or auto gen generation, I guess that's redundant. On the auto gen and OSM data, this is a similar thing. I'm guessing I did not look at the satellite view. Not sure why I should have, but I'm pretty confident this is an air park. And we're starting on the end of the runway because it's not a modeled airport. And I apologize for the leg weather just updated. Anyway, um, we're starting at the end of the runway. There's a train coming there. I also notice over here, where was that? Oh, I saw it actually like the end of a line right there. I thought that was kind of cool. Anyway, that is introduction. That's the story. Let's just get going. It's going to be a short flight. And the train is going to disappear. Okay, so we're already on the runway. There's no taxi. I assume we're at an air park. I told you where we're going. I told you why. 52 nautical miles. Quickie for us, hopefully. We'll see. I mean, that's still going to be about 35 to 45 minute time, I would imagine. At least my time will be that. You're, edited, you're watching the edited down version, of course. That being said, we do not need three hours of fuel. Let's do, let's do an hour 40 or so, just in case. Be about 11.30, well, no, 11.15 departure because it doesn't take much to start this thing up. So I don't think there's anything else. Oh yes, the flight plan, there isn't one. Where we're going, Davis Field, there's no published instrument approach on AirNav. So it's going to be purely GPS. We'll fly visual. If we can see the runway, we'll land on it. If we don't, we'll fly over the airfield based on where GPS sends us, and we'll circle to land based on the weather there. So let's hop inside, get this thing started. I actually don't have a checklist created for this aircraft. This is a default Cessna. If I hadn't said that already, the most underrated default aircraft, of course. I know it's not as realistic as some of the pay we're offerings, but for my purposes, it's just fine without spending more money. Although, I'm being encouraged by my wife to buy another airplane. It's been a very long time since I've purchased an airplane. I've just been waiting for updates of the existing aircraft, the 727 being next. I'm holding out for that one, but maybe... Maybe even today, after I've recorded a bunch of flights, I will buy an aircraft. You have to wait and see. Let's get our bobblehead out because we can. There you go. There's your awesome bobblehead in case you didn't know that little Easter egg. All right, starting this thing up. Batteries. Whoop. I guess it's one click. There we go. And we'll get some lights out so people know we're about to start some components here. Start our. What am I I'm drawing a blank. No, I think it is that easy. Mixture forward, throttles a quarter away, and spin and hold to start this one. Click and hold to start this one. They're all a little different. It's gonna torque on us. Looks like it torqued a little bit. There we go. Now avionics can come on, just like so. That's just for the GPS. We'll bring that mixture back just a little bit so that we don't, um, oh, keep that up though, so that we don't follow the spark plugs. All right, those lights are on. Oh, turn on the light for us. Pytot heat for now. Fuel pump should have been on. Whoopsie, my mistake. That's happens when we have a checklist. We don't need tax lights. We're not going to tax lights. Let's turn on the landing lights. Let's throw the yokes back in right now. Let's hop over here. How are you doing, Austin? Good. Okay. Um, 
we are just going to put in a flight plan, which is not this. This was the last flight I did. Which, if you're interested behind the house things, I haven't flown in about three weeks. I did a bunch of flights, got way too ahead of the flights, and I didn't want to overload my viewers, so I spaced them out on the upload or release time, and it's been like three weeks, so let me see if I can get back into the groove. What am I doing? Menu, I think. Yes, and then we'll uh, delete flight plan, like so. There we go. Now we'll put in our destination, because there's no instrument approach, like I said, so no waypoints. It's just going to be straight in the GPS. 3 Juliet 6. So I'm going to do this with you without an edit this time. Since there's only one, 3 Juliet... So, oh, wrong one. Small one. Oh gosh, come on. Big, small, big, small backwards. There we go. Goodness, that was way more difficult. Needed to be direct. I know it says direct, but I'm going to hit it again anyway, just because I feel better about that. Uh, let's go out. Let's see. 28. Okay, so it's half of what it said because as a crow flies. There you go. Good. So take off, turn on the right. Maybe it was autopilot, so we can do some sightseeing. Depends. It's a pretty short flight. I don't think. I think we're even going to get high enough to worry about the clouds. Like I said, I think the base is at 3,800. Anyway, let's bring up our weather so we can set our altimeter correctly. Where are we? It says you. There we are. Little private airfield. And that's not what I meant. So we want to click on the airport, not us. There we go. Wind, light, and variable. So it doesn't really matter. Altimeter 3012. So let's go up here. I really need a preset for this close up. 30 is there. 10. 12 is there. Yeah, let's go one more click. There we go. We are all set, folks. That's all there is to it. There we go. Looking good. I'm trying to see if there's anything else to go over. I don't think so. We fly this often enough. Let's hop inside. Let's get first set of flaps down. Let's get our mixture rich. You can hear a change. Let go the parking brake, and yeah, whoops, and bumping stuff, and um, oh, I did not calibrate my yoke, whoops, hopefully we don't have to do that. I've been having issues where I have to calibrate my yoke every time I start the sim, and I did not do that this time. Hopefully it won't be an issue. Let's just see what happens. We are alive and in the sky. Gear is fixed, but we will step on the brakes to stop the wheels from spinning. Pitch down a little bit. We want to climb a little more cookie than that. First set of flaps up, or actually that'd be all the flaps in this case. So we're going to head out over forest here first, and then we're going to turn right to follow the GPS. Looking good. Like I said, I don't want to go too high because I don't want to um, get into the cloud base too much. Let's start to see if I can turn and coordinate it without looking. Nope, it's not going so well, is it? Let's hop inside for this. Here we go. Whoa, yeah, that's not that's not how that works. All right, let's see here. Coordinate the turn. We go a little steeper, do standard rate turn here. There we go. Alrighty, heading towards your GPS mark. And we will just straighten out like this. And then when we cross over the GPS line, then we'll turn left all the GPS. Like I said, some hand flying probably. Although you all know I end up engaged autopilot anyway, just so I can get the sightseeing views. Well, this is pretty challenging to fly. I'll do some sightseeing, come back, and we're way off course. There's a cool little river looking thing there. I'm pretty sure this is version 4 mesh. I'm pretty sure it is. Looking back at Air Park, I think I have a preset for that somewhere. There it is. Alright, not sure what that would be if that's a golf course or something up there, but. Oh, we're losing sight of the Air Park, but there's that little river. And if I remember right from looking at the map, we should be pretty much over the swamp already. Let's turn to the left to join our GPS. And I'm just curious what the train looks like. Actually, no, the swamp is up ahead. I see the train change. So it looks like if you look off a little to the left of where we're headed, there's some water. And then the train totally changes. And that would be our swamp. Very nice. All right, let's see how we do. And whoop, we went a little bit too much. All right, I think what we might do is you might do autopilot because I want to do some more sightseeing. The whole point of this VFR, purely VFR, I take that back, it's not purely VFR, because we do have our GPS waypoint in there in case I get lost, but intended to be a purely VFR flight. 
Um, I do want to do sightseeing in autopilot will help with that. And that was not water, those are just the cloud shadows, I guess. So there's like this highway here. Let's follow this highway for a minute till we get situated. How are we doing? Yeah, it's pretty much going to line up with our GPS. Okay. Sorry, though, it was not water. That's just in between cloud shadows. Just like real life. Alrighty, let's get some autopilot set up just because I want to sightsee. So let's get a little higher on the altitude. And let's, I don't, well, no, we don't need that. Okay. Let's, um, let's see how I want to do this. Set that to GPS. Hit nav on the GPS. And what we're going to do is in a second, we will engage autopilot and use alt hold. Actually, you know what? We're lined up with our GPS now. Let's engage autopilot now. That'll get us to our GPS track. And then as soon as we get to the altitude we want, I'll just simply hold or push alt on the GPS. <laughs> oh my gosh, alt on the autopilot and hold our altitude. All right, so we're at 2,700 now. When we get to 3,000, I think we'll, we'll engage alt hold. We should be just below the cloud base. Actually, no, we're in the clouds now. Let's hit alt right now. Just hit it, boom. There we go. Whatever we click to that. 38, model come back down. It's going to be 38, 20, 38, 40 or something. It'll level us off. There we go, just below the cloud base, so we don't lose sight of what we're doing. Otherwise, we are still able to use real world weather. Okay, so 2840 is when I hit it. And we're following nav, GPS, simple as that, or autopilot. Autopilot, simple as that. Um, 11 minutes to our destination. I have no stories about Florida. I have been there twice. But, um, just to go to Disney and then to go to Universal Studios during the off season, which is kind of nice. No waiting for rides. However, you get completely sick because you go from ride to ride to ride to ride with no wait in between. And it was hot. It was January. It was freezing overnight and like 90 during the day. I want to see what the swamp looks like. And it looks like, folks, we are entering the swamp. The train is changing. Let's look down here quickly. There's our swamp textures with this version 4 mesh. It looks like dirt and a little bit of grass with trees and the dirt. So I have not seen that texture before. Usually you've got trees over green or just green for grasslands, but trees over the dirt for a swamp. Works for me. Oh, there we go. That looks nice. I like it. Let's come down a little bit just because I don't want to be in the clouds and then we will um, do some sightseeing here. So if we want to do vertical speed, let's just go negative 200 feet per minute just for a moment. And then when we get low enough, I'll just hit alt again and it'll hold us. There's no like preset altitude, at least none that I could find. So that's how we're going to manage this. So let's just come down a little bit. I'm keeping my speed full last two. We just need to get there. It doesn't need to... We don't need to take our time. We're just going to go and look. It's a big swamp. It does look nice, though. It's nice to see a new texture. We're still coming down. Yeah, 200 feet per minute. Hmm, how low are these clouds going to get? I don't know. It's interesting. Let's just keep the way it is. Let's look outside a little bit. Well, there we go. That's not so bad from this view. Well, in the clouds again. We're just going to be playing with the clouds, I guess, so we go low enough. So anyway, if you ever wanted to see swamp textures, there you go. That's what it looks like. There we go, without clouds. Very nice. We're going to do some sightseeing. I'm going to come down below the clouds. In fact, I'm going to increase this to like 300 feet per minute because I'm getting impatient. And I want to get below the clouds before we have to land. So once I have an airport in sight, I'll kick back in with narration. Otherwise, have some fun sightseeing.
Well, I think Austin is having a good time. I kind of am. We had to go all the way down to almost 1,600 feet. 1,582 feet to get below the clouds. So we're really low. We really shouldn't be flying this low, I don't think. And um, we're going to start preparing to land in a moment. We're only a couple minutes out. Otherwise, that is our texture again, really close. I would. I think I'm going to redo a flight like this over some swamps at a much, much higher altitude. But yeah, we must be exiting the swamp because there you go. The train changes over there off in the distance. So let's get this thing managed. We're cooking. We are cruising right along. 125 knots. But I'm just going to go full steam until we get towards the airport. So we need to pull up the map. And as you can see, we're almost there. Looks like the runways go up and down. So I think we will just cross the airfield and pick a runway based on weather, which will be light and variable. So it won't matter. I think we'll do a, tra a right traffic pattern after we cross the airfield. 312, 3012. Same altimeter, same barometer. Doesn't change. Nothing changes. So um, what would those runways be? 1836? We'll do 36. So we'll just cross the airfield. GPL spring us right over. We'll cross the airfield and kill autopilot. And then make a right traffic pattern on the runway 36. That's what we'll do. Um, we're at 1600. What's the elevation? 68 feet. So we we'll probably want to come down to 1,000 feet or so. We got two minutes to do it. So that's 500 feet per minute. Let's come down here. Set autopilot to go down 500 feet per minute. There we go. That should get us. It'll get us just below 1,000 feet. As we cross over the airfield, which, if we take a binocular, should be right in front of us. That's not it there, is it? No, that's a road. I was going to say that's kind of ridiculous. Uh, where is it going to be? Right there. Right? There it is. We'll cross right over that radio tower. Hopefully we won't take it out. Well, that must be the beacon. That looks pretty high beacon. Nope, it's just on the other side. Okay. GPS will take us right over that beacon. That's the plan. Then we'll make the right traffic. Simple as that. Come down 500 feet per minute. I'm going to keep an eye on that, though, because we're at 1260 now. And yeah, we'll be pretty close. I'll make some adjustments. Let me adjust my gyro while we're at it. There we go. Well, there we go. A couple minutes here till we have to do something. Otherwise, I'm just enjoying the scenery. So, yeah, we're definitely out of the swamp now. You can see the train change. See, now it's trees over grass instead of trees over dirt. That's pretty clever. And you can see some clearing there where it's not trees at all. Even at this low altitude, this looks pretty darn good. And um, we're gaining speed because we're coming down. So let's bring back throttles a little bit so that we don't have to do anything too drastic once we cross the airfield, which I lost sight of, but doesn't really matter. A minute away, I want to get down, let's see, 68. I don't want to go down any lower than like 800 feet. So let's just head over here right now, hit Alt right now. That'll let us cross the airfield 800 feet or so. I'll just keep an eye on my throttles, but I'm not going to push them in because I want to start slowing down. Otherwise, that's the way this is going to work. There's a nice little lake there. Very nice. And that must be the shore. Yes, I don't think I mentioned that. Being in Georgia, we're bordering the ocean. Ocean is on the east side of the state, and that must be the ocean out there. I totally forgot we'd see the ocean. Anyway, we're about to cross over the airfield, so I think we're going to um, take over manually. So there's autopilot there. Let's start slowing down. Mixture is rich. And start bringing down throttles. We'll cross over the airfield, make a right traffic, and we'll see how this goes here. I'm hoping, hoping for the best. What's this telling me on the autopilot, on the GPS? I don't even need to worry about it. Arriving waypoint. Yep, I know. There we go. Cross the airfield. All right, so runway 36. Let's set our heading bug to be 36. There we go. So we know now. Is it that one? It's going to be that one. So now we know where the runway is in relation to our position. I'm just going to make a casual turn here. A little less than standard rate. Just so we can get some sightseeing in. Because we all know that's a bad idea when we're trying to land and approach. There we go. That's a nice little nice little river area there. And the elevated freeway, or is that railway? It's a freeway. There's water off in the distance. Alright, we're not doing downwind leg yet because if we look at our heading bug. It's 
So that was a ways to go. So let's get that set up before we look around. So once that heading bug is straight down, we know we're doing the downwind leg and we're parallel to the runway. And yes, we are quite a ways out, so I just wanted to do shallow turns so we could have a little bit of sightseeing. One more look outside before we come in for our base. There's a run airport way back there, which is going to be hard to line up, so we're going to have to give ourselves some room here. There we go, looking at the water, looking around, very nice. It is time now to land this plane. Let's hop inside. Let's do our base leg. We'll know when we're base because the heading bug will be 90 degrees to the right. We'll do flaps in a little bit here. Let's keep our speed up. I'm coming down to ever so slightly, or I was trying to. We're at 600 feet. Takeaway 68. We're about five and a half above the airport. Now this is our base leg because of our heading bug. Now the question is, since we have VFR, where in the world is our airport? Hmm. Let's see. Can I see it out there? I don't see it out there. So we're just going to um, turn in a little bit here and watch our descent. If we get too low, too low, too soon, it'll be difficult to see the airport. Let's start coming in now. I have a feeling it's a little early. But I don't know the area. And we went quite a ways out to do an actual traffic pattern. Normally, you want to keep the airport in sight. Look over your shoulder. Oh, yeah, there it is. And then when you see the airport at a certain point over your shoulder, you know to turn. You always keep the runway in sight when you do a traffic pattern. I just wanted to look around for some scenery. So that's a little bit of difference between real flying and simulator flying. It's in the simulator, we're doing it for the scenery as well. But um, then stuff like this happens because we're not looking at the airport, looking at scenery. Anyway, let's bring the speed back so we can get our first set of flaps out in a moment here. You know, let's do flaps a little early. Let's do them right now. Throttles are back, even though <laughs> they shouldn't have to be, but we're not going to have the greatest approach. Second set of flaps, a little bit of throttle now to keep us from descending too quickly. Alright, we're going to come in steep. I could slip it, I guess. Or keep the airplane level, and, or the wings level, but then you use rudder to slip. Why don't we do that? Let's use right rudder. I'll do a little bit of left early on. That'll help us come down fast. See how fast we're coming down? See that? Slipping on purpose here. Actually, you're not supposed to slip with flaps, are you? Whoops, pretend none of that happened. Now I gotta recover. Level off, round out. There we go. Throttles back, round out. Without floating, round out. Let it touch down. We're not in a hurry. There we go. Get the nose wheel off. There we go. We've been down a while. Nose wheel is down now. There we go. Brakes. Light brakes. There we go. Good. Wings, or wings. Flaps coming in. I did not start the clock, did I? Um, look at my recording timer though. I didn't cut much out, so it was about a 22 minute flight. Take away the startup and introduction. Yeah, about a 20 minute flight or so. Maybe a little less than 20 minutes actually. We'll just roll this out here and then we'll pull off to the side and park it. Alright, so we demonstrated a little bit of slipping, even though I don't think you're supposed to slip with flaps out. Or maybe it depends on the airplane. Because I know when they land at St. Bart's, they'll slip it in the twin otter with flaps but then I think in a Cessna you're not supposed to slip with flaps I know half of you watching if not most of you watching do know the answer to that so I'll leave comments of course I'll research it too so by the time you leave your comment I would have researched but for everybody else go ahead what are the rules on slipping in a Cessna let's just limit it to that because if every, every airplane is different you know so rules of slipping in a Cessna and I'm trying to get going here by my sim installing because of the weather. Let's come down here. Oh, there we go. Bring <laughs> make sure back to lean because we're taxiing. Get some taxi lights on instead of landing lights. Where are you? There you are. Oh, other way. Those click spots don't really line up. Okay, let's taxi a little bit. Park this thing. Goodness gracious. For those of you who don't record yourselves, it is tough to talk and do things at the same time. <laughs> until we come habits like the B1900 I do so much I don't I can talk through that but something like this I don't do all the time it does make it tricky and the weather is trying to update here we go let's just pull off here get out of the way and welcome to Davis Field in Folkston Georgia are you really gonna stop right there come on let's get a little off the taxiway here come on 
There we go. Anyway, welcome to Folkestone, Georgia. Very, very quick flight. That was my intention, was to have a very, very quick flight. Set the parking brake. Turn off avionics first. And then fuel pumpy would have turned off in flight and then turned on again upon landing. I left on the whole time because I was focusing on the sightseeing swamp thing. So do not use this as a tutorial, please, for this aircraft. There was like a dozen things I didn't do right because I wanted to focus on the textures of the swamp. We'll pull back the mixture, kill that thing out, then we'll turn off our fuel pump. Actually, we should probably have done that first. Turn off that. We're not going to start up again so we can turn all these lights off. Man, that click spot's in a weird spot. Turn that to off. Magnetos. Turn that to off so it stops whining at us. There we go. Oh, wait. We better put Mr. Austin back. Put him back. There you go. All right, let's open up these doors and get out of here. So there you go, very, very quick flight. Like I said, I forgot to start the timer, but looking at my recording timer and taking away introduction, it was less than 20 minute flight. We did go a little bit faster. We pushed the airplane a little bit. We were a little bit beyond red line, but I just want to get across. Once we saw the swamp, we had an idea. I may do this flight again, or a similar flight, at a much, much higher altitude without weather. That way we can just get up to like seven, eight, nine, ten thousand 10,000 feet and see the swamp texture instead of at like 2,000 feet. But I want to do real world weather. Um, very seldom can we fly a little plane like this with real world weather turned on for obvious reasons, such as wind. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed the flight. I know it's super quick. I have another couple quick ones, and then we have a really, really long one, too, coming up. So at least one more quick one, then a long one. A few more 50 states before I do something else. So I encourage you to subscribe if you haven't already. Turn on notifications so you know when I'm uploading these. Check the playlist if you haven't seen the previous videos of the series. We're going through all 50 states. Touch, take off and touch down in the same state without crossing state lines. And with that being said, catch you on the next one.